All right, hey guys, welcome back to another DOY Creations video. I am Jeanette, also known as Soraya. And before I get started, I always like to give glory, honor, and praise to the Most High, Yah. We are getting ready to make some of these ribbon earrings um, for this month, which is called Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And if you want your earrings to be in this large size that I'm showing right here, you're going to chain a number of 40. However, if you want your earrings not so large and you prefer them to be in a smaller size, so you have an option for that large size, or you can make them smaller like I have right here. And you can see the comparison is tremendous. For this one here, I chain a number of 30. So if you want the small, the, the process is just the same, but the number of change would determine if you want them to be a larger size or if you would like them to be a smaller size. And one other quick note, these has not been starched, which means I just crocheted them, put my fish hook on there and my, um, my ear hoop. And that's it. That's all I did with that. However, these right here has been starched. I use starch and I use my iron to make these more stiffer. So those are your options, have you want. So let's get started with this tutorial. So I'm going to be making them in this size right here because this was the one that I wore on my Sunday Live and it seemed like everybody liked it that size. But go ahead and chain only 30 if you would like it to be in this size. I am using for this tutorial a 3.5 crochet hook. And I'm using some mainstay yarn. You can use whatever yarn you have available. This is a four ply yarn and this one is in pink. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. We're going to get started with making a slip knot. So make your slip knot however you do, but me, I'll drop, I grab a yarn and pull it around two fingers and I crisscross it. I go inside there, the longer piece, I pull through. Now, I'm going to go ahead and chain up 40. So go ahead and do a chain of 40, and the way to do a chain, grab the yarn, pull through, one, two, three, four, five. So go ahead and do 40, and I'll meet you back. Okay, if you have your chain of 40, don't forget to also have your tapestry needle to sew in your loose pieces. And if you are going to be making these into earrings, please make sure you have one or two, I'm sorry, two fish hooks and also have two jump rings. Also have some pliers to put the jump ring on. So I forgot to mention that to have your pliers, your sewing needle to weave in the ends, your jump ring and your fish hook. So now that we got all that, and the next, so you got 40 stitches or 40 chain, make sure your work is straightened out. And the second chain from the hoop. So this is the first one. We're going to go into the second one and we're going to go right in and do a single crochet. So what we're going to do on this all the way down is one single crochet all the way to the end of this stitch. To do a, a single crochet, you go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull through. You have two loops on there. Grab the yarn and pull through both. So I want you to do single crochets all the way to your last stitch and I'll be right back. I've made it all the way to the end where I have a single crochet into each stitch across. Here's option number one. If you don't want your earring to be so thick, you can stop right here and you can fold your work in half just like this, making sure my bottom is even if you like this size. For the smaller size right here, I only went one row of single crochets. However, the larger ones, I did put two rows of single crochet. 
because we are doing the larger, we are doing the larger earrings, I'm gonna show you how to continue on. So once I get through, I'm all the way to the end, I'm going to chain up one, turn my work around, and directly back into that same space that I did the chain up one, I want you to do a single crochet. This will cause our end to stay even. And now you can continue on with your single crochets all the way across. So this makes our end line up very well. So we're just gonna continue on with our single crochet all the way to the end of this row as well. Okay, so I went another row. So we had two rows of single crochets. Now that is large, that is as large as I would like it. So now you can go ahead and cut your yarn and pull through. So what I want you to do is sew in this piece right here and sew in the other piece. And what I mean sew in, I just want you to hide this somewhere in here and hide the other side in, the, in your work. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, for those of you who probably do not know exactly what I mean, I got my, my tapestry needle on my yarn and I'm just going to hide my work right inside my work. I'm gonna hide the strain inside my work. So I'm just gonna take my tapestry needle and pull it through. All right, straighten it out, make sure it's nice and neat. And I can take my scissors now and cut that yarn. You can go further if you want to. All right, so that's nice and hid. I'm just gonna go to the other side and do the same. Now that my strands has been hidden inside my work, what we're gonna do, this is your front side. It looks like this. Let me show if I could bring it closer. This is our front side and this is our back side. We're gonna do on our front side, we're gonna take our, here's our work, it's on the front. We're gonna bend it just like this and we're just gonna cross it over just like that all right our front side is showing make sure it's even at the bottom you can make your hole smaller or you can bring it out use your own preference so i think this looks good right about here both of my bottom is even take your tapestry needle and you can use the thread that you just sewed in or just cut you another piece of small thread. You're gonna go in from the back side of your work. Okay, so there's the back side. I'm gonna go right in and put my tapestry needle in there. Pull through, but not all the way through because I want you to leave, pull one strand through your work, just like that. Now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to bring it in and out through the other side and pull that through. All right, so now I have one piece of strand here and another here. So I want to make sure this is really secured on there. I'm going to go back in my work from the back to the front, pull through. Bring that strand on through. And I'm gonna go back in there one more time. So this just makes sure my work is nice and secured in there. So once I went a couple of times in there, you wanna be able to see the pink. I'm gonna remove my needle and I'm just going to tie this into a knot. So I'm just gonna wrap the yarn, tie it, not too tightly, but tight enough. And then I'm just gonna tie it into a knot. Just like that. Now you could take your tapestry needle again and sew in this piece here and sew in that and I'll be back. Okay, so those strands, you can either sew them in or you can cut it however you want to do it. So this is how our works looks. Right up here, 
I just want to give that a little pinch. So now we're going to go right at the top and put our fish hook and our, what is our jump ring and our fish hook. Before you do that, you can take some starch, spray it down, and you can iron this flat if you choose to, or you can leave it just the way it is. Another thing, if you do not want this as a pair of earrings, you can take one of these hair pins that looks like this, that goes in your hair to hold it down. This is a smaller one. And you can have this into a ribbon that can go onto your hat or a garment. And all you would need to do is go in from anywhere, just like this, and pull through. And if you want to have this to hang onto your coat or put it on a hat and it's just for a temporary thing, you can definitely do that. I don't have a hat around. So you can have this as on your, you could put it on your shawl or you can have this to go on to a hat, have you want to. But if you wanted the earrings in which we doing, and you can find these at your local beauty supply store and or at Walmart. So once you have ironed this down flat the way you want to, we can now take our jump ring. Let's see if I can. Let's just take our jump ring. And we're going to open the jump ring up just like this. And now it's open. And this is our front side. This is our front. So I need to go in in the back. Hard to do it on the camera. Hard to, okay, so this is our, make sure I'm telling you right. This is our front. I need you to go in right on the top of the back stitch. So I'm going to go in. Make sure you're centered. And I got the fish hook on there. No, I have the jump ring. And now I'm going to add the fish hook. I'm just going to slide that right on top of there. And now all I need to do is hold that with two fingers and I'm going to close it up. Make sure it's closed. And now that it's closed. And now I have my earring. I'm going to take one of these off. This is one that is, has been ironed, and this is one that has not been ironed. It's totally up to you, but it is a Zach earring. So there you have it. As if you, if you iron it, it's going to give it a nicer, longer length. However, if this length right here is sufficient for you, that is fine. So that is one that has been starched on your right side or my right side and on the left side has not been starched. So again, guys, that is all for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can definitely, you know, use a pen or use one of those. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial quick and easy. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if it helped. And also, if you have not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit your bell settings to all. And until next video, always remember, y'all, yeah, Psalm 68.4 in your King James Version. Always keep your life and your health in check. And I'll see you guys in my next video. All right. Bye for now. Have fun.